there, Lindsay Weirich here, the Fruit and Crafter, and today I'm going to show you how you can use lids and duct tape and popsicle sticks and a piece of plexiglass to make a really cool stamping tool. So check it out. The first thing you need to do is gather your supplies. You need duct tape, a popsicle stick, a piece of plexiglass. You can use the thinner plexiglass. Uh, this is quarter inch. It comes in 16 by 20 sheets at um, your home improvement store, and I had my husband cut these down into different size blocks, and I actually use them for my um, stamping mounts because they're so inexpensive. Um, that big sheet of plexiglass cost about um, plexiglass cost about fifteen dollars, and I got tons and tons of blocks out of it. Um, if you can only find the smaller plexiglass, that will work just fine, so don't worry about that. And you need a lid. This is just a lid from a coffee can. Um, use different sizes because they'll give you different um, uh, round things to work with, obviously. And um, you'll need a pair of heavy-duty scissors or an X-Acto knife. The first thing, oh, I'm going to show you paper that I made with my homemade jig. See how you get a nice kaleidoscope effect? And here is a layout that I made yesterday. I had this really bright canary yellow paper, and to kind of tone it down, I used my jig to stamp these wonderful medallions, and then I freehand stamped these bigger ones around the edge because my um, jig was too small to reach the edges, but the one I made earlier today would do that just fine. All right, so the first thing you want to do is take a lid, and you want to trace it on a piece of scrap paper. And then you want to cut out this circle. So you cut your paper into a circle, and fold it in half. Let me move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing better. Fold it in half again. And fold it in half again. Now the more <clears throat> folds you make, the uh, more notches you'll have on your template. And here I am just going to trace the end of it. I'm going to show you. I took this block earlier and I taped a popsicle stick to it with a piece of duct tape. So that's basically what you need to do to make your stamping paddle. So now I'm going to trace that popsicle stick on my jig here and cut that out. These, these uh, heavy duty scissors make it easy to cut these uh, multiple pieces of paper. And when you unfold it, you'll have kind of a gear shaped piece of paper and then you want to tape it to your lid right here on the inside and then take your scissors and you want to cut out the gaps and you can bend that down and cut it out and do that all the way around your lid. Now here is one that I cut previously and you can kind of see the edges here, I've got a lot of gaps here. And um, then I took a piece of foam core and I cut out a couple like circles from it and I glued it onto the bottom so I could raise it, raise it up a little higher. You can use cardboard um, or styrofoam or foam core like I did, whatever you have, just raid your recycling bin. So now we've got our plexiglass with a popsicle stick taped to it just so it kind of comes out a little bit and it fits in our little gaps here. So to stamp our kaleidoscope, you want to practice on a piece of scrap paper because um, it might take a little getting used to. You simply take your stamp. I'm going to use this little gear from We Are Memory Keepers. Now you want to, when you tape it down, you want to try to trim off some of the extra duct tape so that you don't, so you can kind of see a little bit where your stamp is going. And I got to grab an ink pad. Hang on one second. So prepared. And just ink up your stamp. And you just stamp and you make sure that your um, popsicle stick slides right in to the gaps that you have. This is really too big to be so close to the gear, but you get the idea works really well. It actually works better than my first attempt, which I thought my first attempt was pretty cool. Um, I'll show you. I had appropriated a couple of gears from one of my son's um, toys. They were just these decorative gears that went on his marble maze, and I cut a piece of rubber gasket, and I put that on so it wouldn't slip, and then I made this paddle to go around that, and I thought that was a great idea, but I figured if I shared that, a lot of you wouldn't have these gears, and you wouldn't really know what to do. So this way, you can you can make it right out of the lid. Whoops, I stamped on the wrong, I inked up the wrong side. So then when you go to do another row, 
you take off that stamp. Actually, while it's still on, what I would do is I would put my next stamps on, a couple more gears here, and then I would remove my first stamp. And of course, you could put those all on at once and get a couple rows done at one time. I even tried that. That would have been easier. I'm going to move those a little closer together. I can see that they're going to overlap a little bit. And this is why you do it on scrap paper first, because that way you can, you know, figure out exactly what you want to do before you commit to your nice paper. It's just such a fun way to build a background, and you could skip every other one if you wanted to. There's so much that you can do with this idea. But there you go. I feel like MacGyver. Duct tape, popsicle sticks, plexiglass. It's all good. It's fun. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!